Physics lecture number four, calculating distance from initial and final velocity. Acceleration is the change in velocity over time, or A equals delta V divided by T. Uniform acceleration means that the velocity is changing at a constant rate. For example, if a car were increasing its speed at a constant rate, a velocity time graph would be a straight line like this. Okay, so this shows that the velocity is increasing at a constant rate, and it's just going to be a straight line. So this is an example of uh, a graph of uniform acceleration. The slope is constant, so if the slope of the line is constant, um, you have uniform acceleration. If, however, the car sped up, then maintained a constant speed, and then slowed down, uh, the velocity time graph would look like this. So here the car is speeding up and then suddenly the car is moving at a constant speed and now here the car is slowing down. So the slope is changing and anytime the slope changes uh, that means you have non-uniform acceleration. <clears throat> if an object is undergoing non-uniform acceleration its speed is not changing at a constant rate. Uh, its speed varies between increasing, slowing down, or remaining constant. If an object is undergoing uniform acceleration, we can calculate the distance it covers over an elapsed time period. So all these problems that we're going to do in this lecture uh, deal with uniform acceleration. All right. So one simple way to calculate the distance covered is to use the formula for average velocity. So average velocity is distance divided by time or uh, change in x over time. Find the distance covered by a car moving at an average velocity of 12 meters per second for 4 seconds. Alright, so here's our formula. Average velocity is distance divided by time. Uh, the average velocity is given as 12. Uh, the time elapsed is 4 seconds, so that's going to be t right here. We're going to solve for x, so you just multiply both sides by 4, and you get uh, x equals 12 times 4 gives you 48 meters. Now suppose a car is undergoing uniform acceleration. Over an 8 second period, its velocity changes from 15 meters per second to 31 meters per second. How would we find the average velocity and the distance covered? Well, if we want the average of two numbers, we add them together and divide by 2. And thus, the average velocity of an object uh, undergoing uniform acceleration can also be expressed as v average equals vi plus vf divided by 2, where vi is the initial velocity and vf is the final velocity. So we're just adding the initial and final velocities and dividing by 2. So if the velocity of an object increased from 15 to 31 meters per second, it, at, its average velocity would be, here's the formula, and then vi is 15, that's the initial velocity. It speeds up to 31, that's the final velocity. 15 plus 31 divided by 2 gives me uh, 23 meters per second. And now knowing the average velocity, we can calculate the distance covered over 8 seconds. So we're going to take this 23 meters per second and use it to calculate the uh, distance. So using this 23, we use the formula for average velocity, and we found out that the average velocity is 23. So we're going to solve for x. It occurs over an 8 second time period. So solving for x, you would multiply both sides by 8, and 23 times 8 uh, will give us 184. Um, since we want two significant figures, we'd write this as 1.8 times 10 to the 2 meters. So that's the distance covered. Now, if we substitute vi plus vf divided by 2 in place of v average, uh, we can rearrange this formula here to solve for uh, change in x. So here's the formula for average velocity. v average equals change in x over t. In place of v average, we're going to put vi plus vf divided by 2. So v average is vi plus vf divided by 2 equals x over t. And we're going to solve for uh, delta x. The way you would do this is that you would just uh, cross multiply. So 2 times delta x, that goes here, is going to be equal to vi plus vf times t, vi plus vf times t. And then to get x by itself, you would divide both sides by 2, which is what you get here. The 2's cancel. And you end up with this formula. 
So this is a formula we can use to uh, find the distance an object covers if you know its initial velocity, its final velocity, and the time it takes for it to change its velocity from VI to VF. So this will work for an object at uniform acceleration. So we can solve the previous problem more quickly. Um, the problem was find the distance covered by a car that increases its velocity from 15 meters per second to 31 meters per second over an 8 second period. Alright, so we're trying to find the distance, delta x, and it's vi plus vf divided by 2 times t. So the initial velocity was 15, final velocity was 31, I divided by 2, and this occurs, the speed up occurs over an 8 second period, so that's the value of t. So 15 plus 31 divided by 2 times 8 gives 184 meters. And the distance covered by an accelerating object can also be found by examining a velocity time graph of the object's motions. More specifically, the area under the line of a velocity time graph gives the distance covered. The area under a velocity time graph can be found by inscribing a trapezoid under the line. Remember that a trapezoid is a four-sided object that has at least two sides that are parallel. So here's a picture of a, a trapezoid. <clears throat> it's a four-sided object. It has at least two sides that are parallel to each other. And in this picture, side A and side B are parallel to each other. Um, so um, the area of this is found by adding together the lengths of the parallel sides, uh, multiplying it times the distance between the parallel sides C, and then dividing by two. So here's sort of the formula for the area of a trapezoid. All right. So it's parallel side A plus parallel side B times C, the distance between the parallel sides, and then divided by two. So the area of a trapezoid is found by adding the lengths of the parallel sides, dividing by two, and multiplying by the distance between the parallel sides. Now the following graph shows an object moving at increasing velocity. And what I want you to do is we're going to try to find the distance covered from two seconds to six seconds. So here's our object. Velocity is on this axis, time is on this axis. Over this time period, or as time goes by, the velocity increases. And what we want to do is, from two seconds to six seconds, we want to know what distance it covers. Well, if we read the graph, we can see that at two seconds, it's moving at 10 meters per second. And then at six seconds, it's moving at 30 meters per second. So this is the initial velocity, and this is the final velocity. And then it occurs over this time period from two seconds to six seconds. So what we can do if we use the formula that we learned previously, uh, change in distance is going to be vi plus vf times time divided by two. All right. So, vi, the initial velocity is 10, because we're doing this from 2 seconds to 6 seconds, and at 2 seconds the velocity is 10. And then the final velocity, well, at 6 seconds, the velocity is 30. And then the time period, it goes from 2 seconds to 6 seconds, so the time, I'll just do this off to the side here, the time is going to be 6 minus 2. So that's going to be 4 seconds. So time is 4 divided by 2. All right. So 10 plus 30 times 4 divided by 2. The distance it covers when it's speeding up uh, from 10 meters per second to 30 meters per second over this time period is going to be 80 meters. All right, so that's how you would solve the problem using the formula. But uh, what I'm going to do is from six seconds to two seconds, I'm going to color in 
this area right here, the area under the graph from two seconds to six seconds, it would look like this. All right. Now, this area is a trapezoid. And the area of a trapezoid, well, it's going to be the length of the parallel side. So this is 10. See, it goes up to 10. And this is 30. See, it goes up to 30. So the area of the trapezoid is going to be the length of the parallel sides added together, 10 plus 30, 10 plus 30, divided by 2 and then times the distance uh, between the parallel sides. So from here to here, uh, that length is 4. All right. So there's that. Okay. And you would get area equals 80. Okay. But this is the same calculation we used to uh, determine the distance covered. See, when we use the uh, formula to determine the distance, we did 10 plus 30 times 4 divided by 2. And then when we found the area of the trapezoid, we did 10 plus 30 uh, times 4 divided by 2. So since we're using the same calculation method, uh, that sort of proves that the area under the line, under this line, and the distance covered are the same thing. All right. And then, just like that, the reason why I'm sort of teaching this is because um, Later on, when you take calculus, you might get a uh, graph. Let me get another piece of paper. You might get a graph that looks like this. You've got velocity, time, and instead of having a nice straight line, you, know, you might get a curved line like that. Well, how do you find the area under a curve? Well, the way they did it is that you just inscribe a whole bunch of trapezoids underneath the curve and you add up, you calculate the areas, then you add up the areas underneath. So this is just sort of a very slight introduction to uh, what you're going to do when you take uh, calculus. For a PDF transcript of this lecture, go to www.richardlouis.com. This has been physics lecture number four, calculating distance from initial and final velocity.